you all for coming. Thank you, both Alex and Anne and Jennifer. Uh, it's really um, a pleasure to be here and this really nicely um, constructed gallery. Um, Scott Miller is a composer, and I sent, I um, I'm bringing his regrets that he couldn't be here today. But we worked on this piece together, and uh, I can try to speak. Um, about the, the music and then um, talk to you individually with questions. So uh, this is a piece called The River That Flows Both Ways. That is the Native American Lenape word for the Hudson River. And, and all the imagery in the piece is filmed, photographed on either the Hudson or the Garonne River in France, both are river estuaries. And my studio for the last uh, good number of years in one place or another has been on the bank of the Hudson and it's influenced my, my work greatly. Um, I'm really interested in everything that was said today and there are some really wonderful confluences uh, that I wouldn't have known about unless I was hearing each of you speak about the pieces. Uh, my background is in video um, from the late 70s when, of course, it was an analog and, and an analog <coughs> system um, and, by comparison today, kind of primitive. I also, while I was in graduate school, had an opportunity to uh, futz around with one of Namjoon Pike's really early video synthesizers that he made <coughs> um, with Shinya Abe. Uh, uh, Japanese engineer, and uh, my graduate thesis included something made on this wacky device that generated imagery based on waveforms. Um, and I, I totally forgot about that, but over the years as I became much more invested in working from the Hudson River where I have a studio, I realized that you know, again, I was working with waveforms, but in an entirely different way because these were actually, you know, observed uh, waveform patterns, reflections that were in a body of water. So my, my work involves both painting and video, and they, um, for a long time, I, I gave up the video. After graduate school and teaching, I moved to Japan where I had a job, and I was, mm -hmm. I, I uh, moved into sort of a mid-sized city, but on the outskirts, it was very rural, and I was surrounded by these fields that were flooded to, you know, initiate the growth of these rice plants, and that totally transformed my way of thinking. Plus, just being in the interior of Japanese structures and architecture uh, was very much more visually complex than I. Could absorb, and the last video pieces I did were uh, sort of portraits of people I met in Japan. And one was a portrait of a master of calligraphy. So, just like you heard, I, I was influenced by studying calligraphy, and uh, I'll explain how that gets into gets into this piece. When I got back from Japan. I sort of abandoned video, um, and I mostly painted and drew. And when I wound up with a studio many years later on the bank of the Hudson, I found that I wanted to work outside from direct observation, um, like Fred was saying, which was interesting because my studio is also right beside the Catskill. Oh, really? Yeah, I've seen that. And since that time, which is about 1992, my paintings are all done on site. And this piece sort of was an, an accident that took six years to complete. It wasn't entirely an accident, but um, I thought I was shooting video. And <clears throat> my paintings and have nothing to do with photography. They're all perceptually based. But uh, I was on the bank of the river thinking I was shooting a still image just not for any artistic purposes, but in fact, the, the camera was set to video. And I was pointing the camera into the light, which of course you're not supposed to do. 
And I've been using this camera for a while, but this was its final uh, swan song, and the, and the chips started blowing up. And, and, and as it was blowing up, um, it recorded these just wacky strobe-like violet patterns, which I think you've seen. So um, that was that, you know, the camera was shot, but it, yeah, that was like an unhappy accident for the camera. But it was, a, it, was a, it was a cheap thing, and I kept buying them on eBay to try and repeat this. <laughs> and I never quite got anything just like this initial footage, but you know, that's how things happen. Oh, that's your actual initial footage from that? Yeah, that was this old cannon blowing itself up. Wow. <laughs> uh, most of this piece are still imagery. Everything, I would say, is 90% still imagery that also incorporates about 10% of video, including what you just saw. You can see when the video, you know, emerges. Uh, I worked on this for, you know, uh, this is my second major video work after I got back into video. I had shown that little clip uh, I just talked about to a curator who was visiting my studio to select paintings for a show I had in 2010 at the Petroleum Museum of Art solo show, and she said, this is interesting, why don't you do some video for the show? So I got into doing a very small piece that was presented along with um, my painting, and that got me going with video again, so that was around 2000. Uh, structurally, I think of these three channels, and the fourth channel was the acoustic one that uh, Scott Miller wrote for the piece. So it's a four channel video, and the first channel is structured around images that I could describe as calligraphic, and they reminded me of my study of Shoda when I lived in Japan. So that sort of classified the panel on the left, and the second channel are images that, for the most part, have a horizontal orientation. As, a, as I'm saying this, I see a vertical orientation, so, you know, half of this is a lie, but. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> anyway, that was the concept. What you're seeing there is the reflection of a barge or a tanker on the Hudson River and its reflection um, Part of, the concept, part of the idea that came out of working on the Hudson is, is embedded in this, and it's um, not something you pick up unless I, I mention that it has to do with um, concern for the river, environmental concern, and same thing goes for the Garon, where I had a studio for a month in 2012. You know, the Hudson's now become uh, um, reindustrialized, and crude oil is being shipped from uh, North Dakota. This is another little video clip. Um, by the way, all of these images are not are not manipulated in any way. There's no color that is added. Um, it's just what the camera saw. So, um, so these horizontal images are, are based on um, incorporating the horizon into the piece in a way. Uh, I think Jeffrey mentioned something about his use of the horizon, which is actually <coughs> interesting. Um, his work. And then um, I, I just got very, these are reflections of barge lights uh, at night going down the Hudson. And the Garonne is being reindustrialized and has been for a while because in France there are a lot of nuclear plants and the river is used to cool them. So I, I noticed an awful lot of algae blooms. And, and so there is a bit of that thinking in the piece, even though because of its abstraction, one wouldn't necessarily get that. Um, and the last, the last channel in my mind, the images are, are there because they have sort of a very loose grid-like structure. Uh, that was a way I had of orienting myself in this body of images that I wanted to present all together. Uh, I still paint. I, uh, I'm working on a new video piece. This is also a little piece of a clip, uh, a video clip. Um, I'll answer any questions you might have about, about the piece. I'm just really? curious, because uh, I was at your show at the Hudson River Museum. Mm. Is this, in fact, what you showed there, or is this a different? 
This is the same key. This is. That's what it's, I mean. it's on smaller screens. Yes. Okay. And it's and it's three different loops that aren't. Oh, that's aren't a good the same thing. Length, right? Yeah. Thanks. Okay, so yeah. yeah each of, I want. Yeah. Each of the four channels, including the audio, are um, close to the same length but different, so that each channel is looping by itself, and there's uh, no. Uh, uh, you'll never see, well, you will see if you wait eight years, five months, three days, uh, 22 hours, and some number of seconds, you will see this configuration again if you stay here that long. Uh, what is that time frame that you just said? That is the length of time you'll have, we will have to um, wait until this specific configuration. Oh. If the show goes to the 31st. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> And that was for the audio. Uh, we only discovered that in some polynomial that one of our assistants calculated. So, um, got it off the internet. So, uh, you know, is, is there, is that? What, what's the length of each generation? Each, each of these is between 12 and 13 minutes. So if you sit here for 13 minutes, you'll pretty much see every, the entire content, but you won't see this same configuration. I mean, as I'm watching it, like I just noticed that there were two purple flashing tracks going on. Um, I think I've seen that maybe once before, but not exactly that. So I'm constantly um, <laughs> surprised when I see the variations that come about. And that was intentional, yeah. But aren't some of the images repeated on different tracks? Only the video, oh, okay. and not all of it, yeah. Yeah, Wait, that's right. Mean, some of these have some of the same. Well, separated. that, um, this right. yeah that appeared over here for a bit and there's another video that switches yeah but um that, that that's all all these images are kind of stationed you know in each in one in each of the channels really dumb question so given that only there's only bits of video here and there. So wasn't this it's just on a dissolve a dissolve function? Like a yeah. Kind of dissolving yeah, function? Yeah. A whole lot of what we're seeing is actually a, an in-between state that exactly that, that didn't, an image that didn't that you didn't take. Right? That's right. Yeah and there's never a single image on mm -hmm. for but all by itself. Um, when I started working on this I had no idea how to well my video editing days went back to reel to reel, right? So um, and that's one reason I gave a video because by the time you got to the um, post production and you wanted to change something, there's no going back to pre production. It was like, you know, the rest of your life before you could finish anything. So I got very happy living in, in Japan and working with materials that were more immediate. And um, so this was video edited. I just anecdotally, when I was working on this piece, I was going to those one-to-one -one sessions that Apple had in the solo store, you could just go there and learn Final Cut. So together with some of the people that were teaching there, we created this algorithm for allowing these dissolves to visually look like what I wanted them to look like. So this is not a standard function? No, it's, it's not. I'll probably use it again, but yeah, that's right. I have an even dumber question. I didn't get where the location is on the Hudson and also the location in France. Yes, that's the Garonne River. Uh, Garonne, where is that? The Garonne. Garonne? Garonne. The G. Oh, the Garonne. 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 Yeah, the Garonne. It's, uh, it runs through the Midi Pyrenees and it comes from the Atlantic and goes into the Mediterranean. Oh. It's very long. Estuary. And it is tidal, the Hudson's tidal and the Garonne mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. I went to the town in France. Beauvillard. But where I was? Yes. Yeah, and my studio was right on the bank of the Garonne, oh. which, which was very nice. Um, yes. So you, 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 you matched it up with your studio on the Hudson. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. Yeah, well, I'm curious, were you at Bow in OVR? No, I was at um no, it was at another oh, okay. another um residency. Okay. Yeah, yeah. 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 There are some brochures that uh, this the show of this piece had was a solo show at the Hudson River Museum and they um um are 
been moved here from there, but on a slightly different size. Um, monitors and since they published a um, little brochure, if you'd like one, I have some over here. Oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Um, can you talk about their relationship with the composer? Oh, thank you. <laughs> Very distant. <laughs> I did the video work, I started the piece and worked on it by myself for about a year. Um, the composer's my husband. And um, I said, um, I'm glad he's not here to hear. I said, <laughs> What would you like to work on the sound? We've never collaborated. This is a, a collaboration. We've never collaborated. He said, no, I think we should be silent. I said, well, all right. You know, I think I'll play the piano um, as I have been taking lessons. And he said, I can do it. <laughs> so, and uh, I, I would give him footage. And he, his work is very different. In fact, it's extremely rhythmic and very fast paced. Mm -hmm. Some of you have heard it. But he was responding to the length of these um, dissolves. And I'm you know, amazed at how well the, the, the synthesis of both the acoustic and the video Work, work together. We didn't see it finally in, for five or, I'm not sure if it was more than five years. Uh, but I, um, the other thing is sometimes the Hudson is called America's First River. And I feel, and you'll have to listen to yourself to more of the sound, um, it has an American quality to me in the vernacular maybe of um, Ives, Charles Ives, and it, it, Scott um, took, Scott took a chord from a Protestant hymnal, and those intervals are the basis of this entire piece. So it's not those, that chord in context. Um, it's, it's, it's just those, that, that relationship of these, this one chord, and he extended it, and uh, I mean, that's probably not even the right word to like use. Like deconstructing it? Um, I'm not sure okay. how to describe it, but, but the intervals have this harmonic structure that he built in, and then there's this kind of fiddle part that, this was um, a quintet, string quintet recorded in a studio, and the fiddle part also feels to me like a certain Americana vernacular. Uh, so all of that was very surprising. I don't know that he intended it that way, but I find that relationship satisfying. Yeah. I've been told that the Hudson River is not really a river, it's in fact a fjord. Oh. Meaning that, uh, for example, when that airplane went down, the mm. water was going, uh, not going anywhere. Mm. Uh, it was in a situation mm. at the same time, so it didn't break up. Uh, I, I wonder what would happen if you did this, say, on the Mississippi River, which is flowing mm -hmm. in one direction all the time. Would it look different? Well, I guess the Garonne would have been flowing. Right. Well, the Garonne, at, you know, at the point where it begins at the Atlantic, I think it's tidal yeah, to some right. extent, but not at the point where I was, when I was, was, and it was nearly stagnant because there was so much algae growing. Uh, the parts that are from France are distinctly not the kind of color you see on the Hudson. So if you've seen sort of flesh-like tones, those are the reflection of some terracotta old bridge reflected in the Garonne. Mm -hmm. And the green is the foliage and then the cerulean, you know, you'd also never see on the, on the Hudson. I just don't think you, maybe a river would not have that quality, a river river, when it's flowing in one direction or that, would not have that quality in the middle. A different kind of movement. Uh, I just don't know. But yeah. I don't think right. Uh, there, I, I don't know myself. Uh, the shots are very close up, so the images are quite abstract, and I probably exaggerate some of the patterns. 